Okay, so in this video, we're going to take a look at what it means to be inversely proportional. Um, so to start off with, we're going to try and establish what you currently think inversely proportional means. So I'm going to show you a few examples, and I'm going to ask you whether you think it's inversely proportional or not. So just looking at this table here, I've kept it very general. So we've just got some kind of independent variable over here, some kind of dependent variable. And we're looking at essentially, so we've changed the independent variable in some way, and we've measured the effect of that on the dependent variable. So looking at this data without doing any calculations, do you think this data shows an inversely proportional relationship? So just think to yourself, select your answer, maybe yes, maybe no, or it might, we might don't know yet. Okay, so hopefully you've had a chance to pick an answer. If you haven't, just pause the video and give yourself time to think about this. Um, so let's have a look at what we should. So the answer is without doing any calculations, um, it could be inversely proportional, but we don't have sufficient data to actually say yes or no. And in, in terms of, we'll, we'll establish what that means in a second, but I just wanna show you another example to see what you think. So here again, we've got a graph, we've got some sort of independent variable against some sort of dependent variable. Um, and we've got a graph that looks like this. So this would be like our line of best fit. So does this graph show an inversely proportional relationship? Select your answer here. Okay, so let's have a look at what we should have. The same answer again. It could be, but again, we don't have sufficient data to answer that question yet. So, um, the what I'm trying to get at here is there's a lot of people have this misconception about what inversely proportional means. So, first of all, I'm going to express what it isn't. So what people think is that inversely proportional is if one thing increases, that makes the other thing decrease. And that is just simply not correct. And that's why the two previous examples, we couldn't say, yes, it is inversely proportional because we actually haven't tested whether or not it's inversely proportional. So is inversely proportional actually? So it's when the product, so when product means you multiply. So the product of the coordinates, so every point on the graph has an x and y coordinate. So we're going to multiply the x and y coordinates. So the product of the coordinates of any point should give the same value. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a couple of examples of actually testing for inverse proportionality. So you can actually know how to do it properly in future. So um, what I'd like you to do is um, get yourself a piece of paper or however you want to note this down. Let's give ourselves a heading of inversely proportional and let's just write down what inversely proportional actually is. So in this video, anything you see in purple means that's something that I'd like you to write down. OK, so if you haven't got that yet, just pause the video so you can uh, do that. I'm going to move on uh, quickly. So. This is a uh, table in purple as well. So I'd like you to draw yourself a table once you've got uh, what inversely proportion is written down. So what we're going to do is for every single line in our table, we're going to calculate what current times resistance is. Because this is how using data we would execute what we're defining as inversely proportional. So we're going to, we've got current resistance. So I've just picked an example we've sort of come across before. And we're going to do current times by resistance, we should have a unit of amp ohms, so doing current times resistance. Okay, so what we're going to do is for every single row, we're going to calculate what IR is. That's what I've done here. So um, that's where these values have come from. We've done 0 0.52 times by 4, 0 0.68 times 2.9, 0 0.93 times 2.4, and we've done 1.17 times 1.8. And that's where these values here have come from. I've rounded them all to a sensible number of significant figures. This data here and this data here, they're, they're two significant figures. So I've given all the answers to two significant figures. So looking at these values, current multiplied by resistance gives the same value every time, at least it, within experimental uncertainty it does. So we're not looking for exactly the same value every time. We're just looking for very similar values every time. So because we've got the similar values every time, 
I can now conclude that current and resistance are inversely proportional. So that's how we actually test using data we've collected whether current and resistance are inversely proportional. OK, so that's all in purple. So make sure you've got a note of all of that. Pause it if you need to. I'm going to look at the same thing with a graph. So again, we're going to put the same test. So we've already said what inverse proportionality is. So what I'd like to do is just sketch yourself this graph here. Don't worry about being too precise about it. Um, we just want a record of this so we can refer to it. So we're going to do the same test on this graph. Now, with a graph, we have an infinite number of points that we could pick on our line of best fit. Uh, but what I tend to do is try and pick as easy to read ones as I possibly can. The points that I picked are these ones. Um, I haven't been super precise about it, so I think my 1, 1 1.5 is actually a bit too high. Maybe it should be 1, 1. 1.4. Um, but essentially, I've just picked four points that I felt were reasonably easy to read from my graph and that cover a decent amount of the graph's area. So these are the four points that I've picked off my graph, and I've got the x and the y coordinates. So then what we do is we go through the So I'm going to do the x coordinate times by the y coordinate. So that's what I'm doing, so 1 times 1.5, 2 times 1.5, and we get these values here. Now, here we've got more of a variation. So Given that we're getting sort of 1.5s and 1.4s, it looks like it could be inversely proportional, but we're getting, for me, we've got a bit too much variation here with the 1.1 and 1.2. So I'm going to say this data is actually inconclusive. I don't think we can say for sure whether it is or isn't inversely proportional because, because the product varies quite a bit. Um, so again, that's a reasonable conclusion to come to based on this data. OK, so again, make sure you've got that noted down. What I'm going to get you to do is uh, work through this for yourself. An example of something completely different, we've got distance to the sun. So these are each are the planets. So we've got like Mercury first, so we've got um, Neptune last, if I remember my order correctly. Um, so we've got some distances to the sun, and these distances are quite long. So you'll see this is actually 10 to the 10. And we've got the surface temperature. So what I'd like to do is pause the video and see if you can work out whether distance and surface temperature are inversely proportional. OK, so I'm going to assume that you have paused the video and you've had a go at this for yourself. It is important that you try it on your own before I take you through it. So what I do is add an additional column to our table. So we've got distance times temperature, that's why DT, like this distance times temperature, which would be measured in meters degrees Celsius. So you see here, all the values in here, I've put the times 10 to the 13 in the top here, so I don't have to write it out loads of times in my table. Um, but you can see here, these are the values you get, and these are all times 10 to the 13. So you can see that distance to the sun and surface temperature are not inversely proportional. And we can see that because the product of temperature and distance gives completely different values every time. Sometimes they're negative, sometimes they're positive. The actual magnitude or number varies quite a lot as well. So I would say that's definitive evidence, actually, that those two things are not inversely proportional to one another. Um, when people often say that they are. So that, that's useful. We've collected evidence and we've shown that they're not inversely proportional.